Hello kitties. I'm trying another video for Triple Feature Tuesday, so uh, this week's Triple Feature is Great Moments in Gay Vampire History. That's right. We are going to look at some hot manpire on manpire action. Manpire. It, it's a word. I, you know, I made it up, but doesn't it sound awesome? Manpire. I couldn't have been the first to come up with this, but anyway. So, the thing about it, the thing to keep in mind through this whole thing is that up until the last, like, 30 years or so, there really wasn't a lot of hot vampire action in vampire films. This goes back, all the way back to uh, Todd Browning's Dracula, with Be you know, the one with Bela Lugosi where the movie producers were reading the script and they saw that Dracula would be, you know, biting Renfield and turning him into his goon. And the producers fairly accurately saw that the whole biting of the necks is kind of a metaphor for sex. It's, I, 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 I know, it's horrifying, but yeah. So, the rule of the day back in uh, the Universal Monster period was no vampires on vampire action. So Dracula only went after the women's. And, you know, the thing with Renfield was played down. But starting with the 80s, it really just worlds opened up and finally the barriers started being broken down. So... Our menu includes uh, Toby Hooper's Life Force, uh, Joel Schumacher's The Lost Boys, and Neil Jordan's interview with the vampire. Now, you, a lot of you may not have heard about Life Force. Uh, but then again, anybody with the internet, it's hard to tell who's heard of anything anymore. Generally, uh, judging by the blank stares I got at the bar not 20 minutes ago, probably not. So, Toby Hooper, director of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, made Life Force, and it's about as good as a movie from the director of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre based on a novel, I shit you not, called Space vampires could possibly be. The plot base, uh, goes something like astronauts go into space to uh, track Halley's Comet, and in the meteor trail of Halley's Comet, they find a spaceship full of very nude, very sexy vampires, including uh, Matilda May, who, for those of you with two thumbs and nothing but purian interests, uh, never wears clothes. It kind of set the standard for horror movies, not uh, horror movie women not wearing clothes. But Life Force. Life Force, the astronauts find the vampires, get, you know, uh, hypnotized by the vampires, and then bring them back to Earth, and hilarity ensues. In this case, hilarity means. Uh, soul-sucking, body desiccation, and just general all-around end-of-the-world scenarios. So, Steve, I played Charles Manson, and it typecast me forever. Rails back. Uh, plays our lead astronaut, and he is totally enraptured by our space mistress. Uh, I believe her... Uh, Matilda May is actually credited as Space Girl. She never actually has a name. But through a series of events too complicated to explain, let alone understand, with the movie on right now, uh, she ends up possessing a psychiatrist played by the one, the only, Patrick Stewart. And after Steve and the space girl talking through Patrick Stewart have a heart-to-heart, -heart, they have... A pretty epic makeout scene. So, to explain, Steve reels back, is making out with Patrick Stewart, all licky style. And the really hilarious thing 
aside, for, you know, more so than just the general image, is the fact that this was Patrick Stewart's first on-screen kiss. So it's always held a soft spot in his heart. So that was our big vampire on vampire action uh, in nineteen in uh, the earlier part of the eighties. Cut to Joel Schumacher's Lost Boys which is the touching tale of a recent divorcee and her two young nubile sons making new friends with, you know, these people. And far be it from me to suggest that even, even by 80s standards, they were a little swishy. But while Jason Patrick's character, Michael, is initially turned on and uh, brought into the group by Jamie Gertz's star, keep in mind that Michael actually gets his first STD from David. He drinks Kiefer Sutherland's blood and gets the appropriate disease, which is, you know, by horror movie standards, the ultimate STD, vampirism. And there are a few moments where if you substitute the word homosexual for killer, it becomes quite hilarious. Case in point, in the climactic fight between Michael and David, uh, Michael yells at David, You tried to make me a killer! And David says, You are a killer. Because, well, yeah, they're probably pretty gay for each other. And it would also explain the bonfire orgy scene, uh, or orgy, by orgy I mean, you know, blood feast, where Michael and the titular Lost Boys uh, feast on a bonfire party. And as near as I can tell, there are no women at this party. It is a pretty serious beach sausage party, which is always a good time. Unless you have the option to have boobs, and then you would have sausage and boobs, and that's always just a little bit better. So, cut to... Uh, Neil Jordan's and Rice's interview with the vampire, which is full-on homosexual couple as vampires. And it's really a lot of fun, because you have Tom Cruise as the vampire Lestat, Brad Pitt as Louis, and their adopted, do their adopted daughter, Claudia, much like, you know, a normal gay family would be, you know, two members of the same sex, adopting a child and it goes a little farther because it's like you have not only just the general fights a couple would have between louis and lestat even though they're technically not a couple um if you look at how they have to keep up appearances by doing certain things so everybody around them doesn't really notice that they're the other it becomes quite interesting all you know the highbrow, awesome stuff before you even think about uh, substituting uh, Louis's uh, hesitance in taking human life. If you replace that with, you know, butt sex, it becomes really funny because all of the fights keep revolving around the stat being angry that Louis won't be his bottom. All right, maybe I only find that funny, but... It's my blog, so it's okay. Uh, so there we have three movies, three, <laughs> three with each featuring vampires, each featuring different levels of homosexuality. Mainly, and I think that's awesome. I just think that's a hell of a lot of fun to look at it that way. You know, has just this gradual progression to Interview with the Vampire, where basically you have two openly homosexual vampires living together and making their way and having, God, just the longest, most arduous abuse, codependent, abusive relationship uh, known to man. Uh, next week, give you a little taste, our, the tr terrible triple feature will be uh, the worst horror movie sex scenes that I can put together or to put it another way no means oh god no so toodles <laughs>